Welcome to the Node.js series of videos. This playlist aims to guide complete beginners to web development with all that they need to start creating websites. It is not my aim to take you from beginner to expert, but to take you from beginner to comfortable. From there you should be able to make your own way. Hi, I'm Ben Plesier and, like you, a fervent user of Wappler. Let me open Wappler to create a new project. Here I am asked for the hosting type. The default is, custom hosting. There are also a few other alternatives. If these other types are unfamiliar to you, then I suggest to stay with the default value. Next, I am prompted for the server model. The choices are, PHP, Node.js, ASP.NET and Classic ASP. Each of these server models require the creation of their own server environments. I will explain these environments in the next section of this video. In this case I choose, you guessed it, Node.js. Let me take you back to the basics. What happens when you open a web page in a browser? To show this, I start the browser. At this stage, all that we see is the Chrome browser's interface, no interaction with the internet and no web page. When I choose to open a website, I see a fully populated and styled web page. My apologies for opening a half-finished site, it still needs a bit of loving care. Aside from that, a lot of activity has happened behind the screen. To see the activities, I right-click while on the page and open the inspect panel. Here I choose the network tab and refresh the page. What we see is a list of files that have been retrieved from the server. The first line is not relevant to the web page. This line fetches a service worker that I will discuss in a video down the track. After that, we see that the main document has been loaded as well as style sheets, JavaScript files, image, an SVG file, a font file, a movie file, a couple of XML HTTP requests for data files and a JSON file. I will call them static file from here on. There is no hint of server-side coding. This could be a PHP coded site or an ASP.NET site. In fact, this is a Node.js coded site. The browser is oblivious to the server-side code because it does not understand it. The browser can only handle the files and actions that are listed in the network panel. Back to when I selected to open the website. When I do this, a lot of stuff happens, like going to a domain name server to retrieve the IP address of the site. I will not go into detail about these activities. More important is the interaction between the browser, which I will call, client from now on, and the server. The client sends an HTTP GET request to the HTTP server. This can be an Apache server, or an IIS server, or a Node.js server. The HTTP server gathers the information contained within the page which I will call, document from now on. The HTTP server will then send a file get request to the file server. The file server analyzes the requested files and sends the static files back to the HTTP server via a response. Dynamic files are sent to the application server. This can be a PHP server, an ASP.NET server or a Node.js Express server. The application server translates the dynamic file into a static document. If the document contains a request for data, the application server will send a request to the database server. The database will process the database query and send the data to the application server. Once the document and the data have been processed, they are posted to the HTTP server. Once the HTTP request has been fulfilled, the files are sent to the client via an HTTP response. The browser will then go to work on the incoming files, creating object model trees. The final process is handled by the rendering engine. This is when you see the rendered page. Why Node.js? Why not PHP or one of the ASP dialects? The answer is simple, it is called Wappler. Without Wappler, creating a Node.js website would require an in-depth knowledge of JavaScript and an extremely long lead time. Just follow one of the many YouTube videos on the subject. Having said that, I am shortchanging Node.js. There are many other benefits in using Node.js for your project. I could write a book on the subject explaining the asynchronous behavior and the lean server environment. With the addition of middleware, Node.js grants easy access to a templating engine and a routing system. As we progress along this playlist, we will come across many other Node.js features. That is it for the introduction to Node.js. In the next video, I will create a static website in Node.js. I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching.